What's going on, everybody? It's Richard Dixon here. Welcome back to the Richard Dixon Podcast. Hope you're having a good day. For those of you that don't know me, I run a coaching program called Growth Getters. We teach businesses how to automate stuff and make better content online and get better leads. We are a multi figure coaching business based here in Glasgow. Now, today I'm going to be talking about the concept of support and specifically supporting the entrepreneurs in your life. Now, I'm going to do a whiteboard walkthrough YouTube video very similar to this in a couple of weeks uh, because they tend to get more views and stuff naturally than, I guess, a podcast on YouTube. Or in my experience, naturally, anyway. But it's something that I think is important to talk about is... I I don't know how you... I'm I'm really bad at collateralising opinions into small like sentences or like a small group of keywords i'm really crap at that so i end up the point i'm trying to make takes like 10x longer than what it should to actually make it what the point i'm trying to get at is many people think they are supporting an entrepreneur in their journey when really all they are is present so just because you were there doesn't mean you were part of it just because you witnessed it doesn't mean you're part of it Just because you sat around and watched it happen doesn't mean that you were a support mechanism for that person. I have had this conversation and hey, yep, I could be the common denominator, so maybe it's me. I don't know. The entrepreneurs in the world, you might be able to assist me on this. Sorry if you're hearing my neck cracking through Spotify or Apple Podcasts just now, but um, I'm a pretty stiff old man. So I've had this conversation many times, friends, family, romantic partners, whatever it may be, who are adamant that they support you and are adamant that they are a big fan of yours and, and like push you forward and encourage you to do the best when really all they do is just exist whilst you're doing it. They don't actually support you. Maybe they think they do. Maybe this is a misunderstanding. I don't know. I might be teaching myself something whilst making this podcast today. But people really tend to think that they know you and how they can support you when really... All they do is just exist whilst you do it. This is the 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 hard thing about entrepreneurship. And by the way, being the partner of an entrepreneur, the family member of an entrepreneur is really hard. I am socially the least present person in my friend group, of which my friend group is like three people. But that is the that is the case. I'm socially the least present. I'm the least present in my family. So I am at less family events and stuff than everyone else because. I'm working or I'm doing events or I have other stuff on. And then when I am there, I am still the least present because my mind is often, I'm checking my phone, I'm checking emails, I'm, I'm doing stuff like that. So I'm less present even when I am present, which is, by the way, this is not a flex or a good thing. I'm not saying like, oh, I'm pure on a different level because I do that. Um, that's just reality. And I've spoken enough about the concept of... Um, known sacrifice for unknown gain and the problem with entrepreneurship being an entrepreneur or being the partner or a family member or a friend of an entrepreneur is that you are the person or you are witnessing the person doing work today that you are not going to know has paid off for a long time so you are doing stuff today making choices ticking boxes taking actions hoping that it's going to pay off at some point. You would literally never know until much further down the line. And by the time you reach that point of when you know it has been worth it, you're no longer looking to achieve that goal. You've you've since lifted your metrics for achievement. So you don't get the pleasure of stopping and going, wow, I ticked that box, I've done that thing, because you're already focused on the next part. So you're constantly living life in arrears of achievement because you're waiting to find out if it was worth it and by the time you find out it's worth it you're not concerned if it was worth it because you're already waiting for the next thing to find out if that's worth it for the work that you're doing today so it is a weird dichotomy and that can be hard for a partner right or a friend or a a family member what i would say firstly is that for the entrepreneurs and i'm speaking to the entrepreneurs but the the people linked to the entrepreneurs can take some understanding from this as well People are often going to put forward what they would do if they were you, right? Now, there's two arguments here is that one, you know, when people champion you being an entrepreneur and all that kind of stuff, they're either doing that because A, they really want you 
to win and succeed, or B, they are celebrating in a selfish way because they see you as no longer running the race anymore. So they look at you and go, ah, this person is no, like, because your chances of failing as an entrepreneur is, like, really high statistically. So they look at you and they say, oh, well, that is great because that person's likely going to go and fail and that takes them out of the race of, you know, the corporate world or the job world. So the more people go and do that thing, the less competition there is inside of the workplace. So they're not actually celebrating you, they're celebrating their own increased chances of domestic success inside of the workplace. Um, and the more people that choose to be like you, the less people are competing for what they see as a good salary or a good job. So as you kind of, you, you, you're two sides there, right? Now, being, being a partner or a friend or whatever of an entrepreneur is, is naturally going to be very difficult because that person, we, people like you and I, are choosing to do something that really isn't common. It's not normal. Um, and that's not me saying it's not normal in like the you're a nutcase sense, but it's not the average thing to do. The average thing to do is to get the job and to work up in the job and maybe even to be a, a contractor or a self-employed subcontractor is like really as far as it goes in the, in the normal sense. But starting the business isn't the most, you know, logical thing for 99 to 100% of people to do, right? So when you choose to go and do that, you also need to accept that you for your business, you, the people that you're bringing along, sorry, in that journey, there's a degree of sacrifice involved for them as well. Now, it's so easy, so easy to be the friend, the family member, the partner who enjoys in the fruits of the labour. That is very simple. Like, anyone can do that. There is no qualifications needed or required <laughs> to, to be able to do that. You can literally just turn up and be the person on the flight with that entrepreneur or be the person at the front row seats or the person who gets the jewellery or sitting in the nice car or any of those positive metrics. Oh yeah, I support this person, I'm here, I'm with them. Yeah, you're here whilst they enjoy the fruits of the labour that you've done absolutely nothing to support them in that sense, right? Now for me as a man, just looking from my perspective, and, and say you're thinking about like the ideal partner to help you with something like that. Because realistically, that's who you're going to spend. I know I talk about friends and family as well, but you're going to spend the most of your life with your wife or husband. When I look at that, it's it's the small things that really matter. It's not about, you know, someone coming and running your bloody business for you or like being in there and talking to your staff or whatever, right? It's about helping you look after yourself because entrepreneurship requires a certain amount of reclusiveness and personal neglect because you're so laser focused on a certain task or achieving a certain thing that you let the rest of your life take a really detrimental impact so sometimes this is as simple as someone reminding you oh by the way you should probably eat something or maybe you should go out a walk or it's a good idea for you to have a shower today. Like, stupid stuff like that that might seem so insignificant to someone that's an entrepreneur who is laser-focused on achieving something. And remember, they're not just achieving it for them, they're achieving it for you as well, right? That's the that's the truth here, is they're, they're achieving it for you also. So, there's a... I don't know how to say it. There's a mutual benefit to everyone but you are maybe kind of left in the dark feeling a little bit useless sometimes because you're not doing the work, you're just waiting in lieu of their work, right? So that, that mentally can be hard and affect your own value as well as a man or a woman, as a partner of a, a, an, an entrepreneur. Now, people will often tell you, and you guys need to detach yourself from this as the entrepreneur or as the, the, the person alongside the entrepreneur, right? You need to, as the entrepreneur, you need to detach yourself from doing what other people would do in your scenario because you are you. And for the people watching that, you need to stop telling the entrepreneurs to do what you would do if you were them because you're not them. For example, let's say you go and you sell a business for a million quid, right? And you sell a business for a million pound, a million pound cash lands in the bank. So you're thinking to yourself, ah, oh, nice, a million quid. Now, being totally clear that is not enough to retire, um, you can invest it well and 
have a, a reasonable income off it, but it, after tax and stuff, you're not going to retire off a million quid. Although it's a nice little kitty to start your next business or your next venture or whatever it may be. And so many people when you're in situations where you've done a massive event and had huge success, or you've sold a business, or you've, you've done some landmark thing that's taken a huge amount of work, you hear stuff like this. Oh, it's time for you to take a break now. Like, go and, you know, take a month-long holiday and travel and enjoy yourself and relax. Or something like, oh, you should treat yourself. Or you should take some time off. You should rest and recuperate. And hey, if you're the entrepreneur that wants to do that thing, fantastic, like, go and do it. But the reality is, for 90% of us, we are not going to want to do that thing because our values tie them to the work that we do. That's where we see value in ourselves. Like, I look at my life and I don't think... Obviously, I value, like, talking to my friends and having, like, conversations, just being a mate sometimes. But the vast majority of my life, I'm most valuable when I work and I'm most valuable when I'm at, of service to people. And that is part of what I do as a job, is coaching people, right? So that is where my value is most attached to in terms of gross output, right? Uh, and also in terms of how I feel about myself. I feel best and most valuable when I'm doing things to benefit people and grow my enterprise. That's when I feel most valuable. So when I have a big event or something that goes really well or a record month or, you know, as of Monday, we're about to do for the second time this year, 19 days straight of events, which is really hard, right? Because I, I, I'm a perfectionist, so if there's something, I read over my slides and I want to edit stuff and I want to change things and I want to switch up parts of the coaching program and do things differently. And like, and so that means that I'm, you know, coaching from nine until five every day because I do all of my own stuff. I have no like assistant coaches or anything. I do all of my own stuff. So, I, I, and it doesn't matter if it's like the eighth day of events because it's different people every like three or four days, you know, um, or two to four days, it's, it's different people. So they're not like, oh yeah, Richard's been doing this for five. Like it's just as important to them on that day as it was the people on another couple of days. So I need to make sure I show up the best version of myself every single time. And at the end of those 19 days, I'm going away to one of our masterminds, which is quite nice because it's going to be a retreat. And then as soon as I get back from that, we're going away with our mastermind. And you might go, oh, yeah, but you go to Marbella, that's really nice. Yeah, but I'm working there and I'm being of service to people. So there's probably about a month solid where I will be dialed in and laser focused, right? And that's hard. And especially if you have like, if you had a family and kids and all that, like that's going to be so, so, so difficult. So to be the partner of that person, you need to have a real clear degree of, of understanding. But at the end of that, everyone, like my mum has always just been nice. My mum worries about me because I work so much, right? And she'll be like, why don't you take some time off? Why don't you go away somewhere? Why don't you do this? And like, yeah, I like going away places and I've not really got much traveling planned for this year. But for me, like... I, I don't feel like I need to go and do that thing. I don't need to go and take time off. I don't need to go and do that. What I see that I need to do is I need to go nice. I just done that. How amazing is it that I've done, you know, however many days in a row of events and then two, like, out of country masterminds and then this and that because that shows that I have a great degree of resilience. So why should I go and take time off? Why should I build up that resilience then go and take time off and let my resilience take a hit? Why don't I just take that momentum and continue and keep going? Now, my goal just now for the next three years is to take my business from where it is just now, which is between 100 and 200,000 every single month, and for us to go to a million pounds a month. That's that's my goal for the next three years. And for me to do that, it's not by going, oh, we had a record sales month this month. We've done 300,000. Why don't I take a month off? That's not going to get me to a million pounds a month. Now, the problem there, though, is that when you get to the million pound a month, do you go, ah, no. Because I'm you as I'm getting closer to it, I'm moving the benchmark further and further away. So I'm constantly chasing that thing. So when I get to the million pound a month, I'm probably gonna be like, okay, now let's get to three. Let's get to five, <laughs> right? So it's not, it's never as easy as that. Or it, mentally, it's never as easy as that because you're constantly moving the goalposts. And I don't know if I'm ever gonna be happy with my level of achievement or if I have to accept and be okay with a life of consistent dissatisfaction sometimes and momentary, you know, 
happiness and senses of achievement as opposed to an overall sense of achievement because there's always more to do. There's always more to achieve and stuff like that. So you need to detach from what other people think is good for you or you should take time off. You should do this, you should do that, you should speak to this person, you should do this and that. No, what I should do is what I want to do and what I want to do is potentially go and do those things but it also might mean that I want to work more and that I want to double down on what I'm doing and I want to go even bigger, harder, faster, stronger, more profitable. That's what I want to do. And people won't understand that ultimately. And the last thing that you want to do as a person in the life of an entrepreneur is start questioning the rationale. Sometimes the best thing to do is just shut up and let them get on with it. I know it's not the most fun thing for you to do in the world. I know it might make you feel like you're not really part of what they're doing. And, and, and yeah, you might, you might not be. But instead of saying, oh, you need to go and do this, or you need to take time off, or you need to do whatever, like, if I had a partner and, and that's what she was saying to me was like oh Richard I really think you should take time off that maybe is just a conversation to help educate them on what it is I'm trying to do because you need to sell someone on that style of life you, you need to like actually sell them on it because people will look on your Instagram and go oh nice cars nice this nice that that's a life I would like it's like you, you kind of wouldn't though fire alarm going off from office hopefully that is a test. But realistically, like, I, I'm just talking from like a male perspective, but so many women think, oh, I would love to be an entrepreneur. Being an entrepreneur is like, it's like a dead cool thing. But you kind of don't. You kind of don't want to be an entrepreneur. You think you do, but you don't, right? Because it's way harder and way more difficult than you think supporting someone like that. Because it's just, it's just hard. That's the easiest way to say it. It is just hard. And the difference between being pretty good at something and being great at something is like 100x the work. So you can be a good business owner and, you know, four or 500k a year. Awesome, right? But the difference between that and being great, 10 million plus, for example, let's say, like the expanse is so unbelievably vast. It's huge. So try and detach, and it might take time, it might take conversation and stuff like that, but detach from being the guy or the woman that tries to tell people what they would do if they were them, because you're not them. So you need to accept there's a degree of misunderstanding. You will never understand what it's like to be them. So maybe you're just trying to help and stuff, but um, potentially your actions are to their detriment because you're telling them, oh, go and do this thing. Go and like take a month off or take some time off. Or maybe you should go and do this. Or maybe you should take a day off today. Or maybe you should sleep in. Or maybe you should do that. Maybe you should just be quiet <laughs> and let me do what I think I need to go and do to make sure that I get this enterprise to the point that I want it to be because that's how I'm going to be able to sustain a family and do this and that and just all these different things. Because there is a pressure that comes with running your own business because you always want to do good by yourself and by your staff and by your clients and by your family or kids or whatever it may be. So there is a lot of pressure that comes with that. And you need to understand that, that it's sometimes the only thing that will make you, make an entrepreneur feel of value is working and, and doing stuff. So when an entrepreneur is, is with you, and understand that we as entrepreneurs are so time poor, so when we decide to put time aside for you, we must really care about you, right? Like... I'm very selective with who I spend time with, not because of social association or whatever, but because time is my most poor form of currency. So if I choose to spend a couple of hours with someone, you mean a lot to me, and I really care about you. So so when I do that, it's something that is, is important to me, and that means I want to see the best version of, of that person and stuff like that. It just brings back so many different memories. It's actually quite hard to talk about, to be honest, because it brings back so many times in your life <clears throat> where you try and, like, just do right by people and give them time and give them effort to the detriment of yourself or your organisation or your, your job or whatever it may be. And, and it doesn't pay off. And not only is it a waste of time, but it ultimately is a just a hard 
a hard situation to deal with because the the resources you allocated to hoping that that thing, whether it be a relationship, a business, a friendship, the resources that you allocated to that thing to make it work or to get a return <laughs> on your resources never worked out. And that's, a, it's a bitter pill to swallow and it is hard for your pride, right? It is hard for your pride and that stuff matters. So, so when someone who's an entrepreneur puts time aside for you, and yeah, they might need to check their phone and stuff, right? But if, if someone who's an entrepreneur in your life is able to put their phone away and sit with you, or able to come to you when you need them, or able to answer the phone whenever you call, don't take that for granted. Because it's, it's hard. It's really hard. And if, if someone who has such large aspirations and such incredible heavy pressure and... Often you'll find entrepreneurs are motivated by pain, the discomfort of feeling average. It's almost like body dysmorphia, but with like your life, right? You're dysmorphic with your own reality, even if you are pretty successful. So when someone's aim someone's willing to pause that for you, don't take that for granted and expect them to do it all the time. Support them and champion them and push them forward and maybe sometimes you need to do so at your own detriment because that's what that's what the dichotomy of relationships is isn't it it's a glass half full half empty sometimes you need to give someone a little bit of what's in your glass to pair them up a bit so it hurts you to lift them um and vice versa which is which is important to to be able to do ultimately at the end of the day you want to be able to know that you, the time you spend the relationship you the relationship you choose to have romantically, friend-wise, family-wise, you want to know that you're going to get a return on your investment of resources. And the resource that matters the most to an entrepreneur is time. So when you're so time poor and you allocate time to people, it really matters. And you, I mean, you mean a lot to that person and you should respect the fact that they're willing to do that for you. And you should sometimes just listen and just... You don't need to give advice or whatever. It's funny because, you know, I start this video talking about how being present doesn't mean you're supportive, but sometimes all you need to be is present. It's such a weird, like, trying to straddle that, you know? But I th I'm thinking of it from, like, an argumentative side because I've had this argument, like, I've lived this movie so many times in my life. I support you, I do this, I do that, and you as the entrepreneur are like, no you don't, like you just exist and enjoy the fruits of <laughs> the labour, you're not there, but then there's other times where you think to yourself, you know, I'm, all I need is just someone to just be there, to speak to, you know, and that's, that's the funny thing about being an entrepreneur, is like, you say no so often that there's no point asking you anymore, and it's, it makes me sound like an absolute idiot, right? But like, you say no so often to nights out and th mostly maybe because you just don't enjoy them, right? But also because you just don't have the time, but you get invited to stuff and you say no so many times that people just stop inviting you and you see them as a win, which is logically the thing that should happen because you've been saying no so many times, so why, why would you do it? And it's not that I want the privilege of being able to say no, but there's something just really nice about being considered. And just as an entrepreneur, or someone who's just really busy in their life, just not feeling forgotten, you know? And like you, you get the you get the feeling of involvement without ha feeling like you have to say yes to the thing. So just ask that person, just ask them, hey, do you, do you want to come on this night out or whatever? You know they're not gonna go, but the feeling of being asked and being remembered and knowing that that channel of communication is still open is, is really important. And it might not be nice for you, them always saying no and just expect a no, don't expect a different answer. But it can be really important to that person and really help being asked that question and being involved in that that kind of like decision making process or process of consideration. So yeah, this kind of went down like about twenty different things, right? But if you're gonna say you support someone, actually support them, actually do it. Don't just support them when they're getting the check handed to them. Don't just support them when everything is going well, right? Because the likelihood is, 
I'm going to say it plainly, and it's, it's different from, from men to women, right? In my opinion, and there's some of you who will disagree with me, and that's fine, you do exist, I'm just going by the majority. If I worked in McDonald's, which by the way, if you work in McDonald's, I'm not having a jab at your career. I hope you have a great career, I hope you have great success there, right? But we can say it plainly, it's not the most glamorous job in the world, right? Neither was being an electrician when I was on the tools. But if I worked in McDonald's, 99% of the people who would be interested in me from a friendship standpoint and a romantic standpoint would disappear, right? But for me, I, I wouldn't think twice about having a partner who worked in McDonald's or who worked in Poundland or who was stuck in between jobs just now and didn't have anything going for them. It's not a point of consideration for me because what matters to me beyond their own career aspirations is how they support and understand me as an entrepreneur. And if you are someone who has someone that understands that, don't take that for granted because it's not common and it's very, very, very rare to find. So if you've enjoyed this podcast, feel free to um, like, subscribe on YouTube. I would love for you to subscribe. Many of our viewers are absolutely not subscribed to us so we don't get the views that I think we deserve. <laughs> so it would be good if you could subscribe to the channel if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify you can also connect with us on there if you're a business owner you want to find out more about what we do www.growthgetters.com it will also be in the show notes thank you for joining peace out see you soon